Okay, this is for Daria and then her boyfriend's chart or whatever. So, like, what, psychically, I guess I picked up one that you had, like, a little brother or something and that, uh, I don't know if you wear glasses and had bangs, but you said you don't have bangs or your mom or whatever. Do you look like your mom? I don't know, but I was right about the little brother, at least. And, um, something about either your mom used to, um, live in a bunch of trailers or you used to live in a trailer. I don't know. I have no clue, but that's just what I heard. And if it's wrong, then so be it. I don't care because I don't know. And, um, I think I was just seeing like a room where there was like a living room maybe. And like, it's right here. There's a window here. You're sitting by the window on your right side of the window. And, um, behind you is like a wall. Maybe there's a cabinet on that wall or something. I have no clue. Or another room. I have no clue. But I was just seeing that when I was seeing the chick with bangs or some shit. I don't know. But anyway, this is your this is your astrology bird chart thing now. Because that's not anything that I know of. But I just picked up one that you had a little brother. So that was cool. Anyways, you're Gemini. Okay? Sun sign in Gemini. And it's in your 10th house. So... <clears throat> Your tenth house is your public image and how you'll be remembered, and it's your reputation. Your Mercury is in Gemini. It's also in the tenth house, Taurus. Okay, your Mercury is how you think, communicate. Okay, so tenth Mercury in Gemini means that. So Gemini's talk a lot, like what, well, like fast. I'm a Gem. I'm I'm a Pisces in the cusp of Aquarius. And Gemini cusp Cancer rising. So my rising sign is in Gemini. It's in the Aries energy. The most fastest sign of the zodiac is Aries and Gemini. So I'm just gonna throw, 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 and. And I say things without thinking. But you are Mercury and Gemini. That means that you speak like you think before you speak at the right. So you can do it at the right time. You don't just like interrupt people. In your 10th house, which is in the 10th house as well, like in your career, or your public eye, or when you're on Facebook, or when you're on YouTube, or whenever you're going to be remembered for, and how you want to advertise yourself as, is in Taurus, which means you're beautiful, and you could be a model, or you're gonna do something, you know, just be stable on the public's eye. And, uh, <clears throat> um, so, you know, but their fourth house at home is where, is your, where's your, is your North Nod is in Sagittarius, it's your life purpose. It's what you like. It's what you came here to gain. So traveling, higher learning, guru stuff. And it's your, your fourth house is Scorpio, which means um, you rebelled against your mom, even if she was your your she was mothering and nursing because your moon is in Cancer in the eleventh house. So Gemini. So either she was like like. Um, racist prejudice or something and told you not to talk to weirdos, but she mothered and nourished you and she was like judgmental or something, I don't know. Or she was just actually your friend and she mothered and nourished you. She was your friend and a really good mother and she could have been two-faced and you're probably two-faced in your friendship field. I don't know because your 11th house is a friend's hopes and wishes and dreams. You communicate a lot more with your friends. I don't know. And you also have third house Libra. That's how you think and communicate. So you might have a beautiful voice because Libra is Venus and it means beauty. Your 10th house is in Taurus. So you'll have, you'll be beautiful on the public side and you'll be a model and all that good stuff. Your Leo rising. So right away when you come off to people as like a narcissist or uh, you get all the spotlight or you come off as shiny and happy and Marsha, Marsha, Marsha kind of really like, I like that. Rising sign, though, for people, though, it, it gives a really positive vibe that you put on people, like golden vibe people feel from you. Your moon is also in Cancer, so you would project your emotions and people would be have heightened emotions around you in your presence. If you felt something insecure about yourself that someone wouldn't think that you're insecure about, they will they would feel it, but they would be like, I wouldn't be insecure about what you're insecure about, but they can feel it. You know, I could feel it for a reason. That's what I do. I don't know. Like, if you're, like, insecure about, like, um, uh, 
a green stain on your shirt, but no one really get, pays attention to it. They can feel it, and they're like, why are you obsessed with that one little green stain? You know, something like that. I don't know. Um, whatever. It's just an example. Okay. Anyways, you have, and like, fourth house, Scorpio, which means you were sexualized, rebellious, and chaos at home. You're just chaotic at home when you go home, but in the public side, you're all stable and, you know, beautiful and all that stuff. But your life purpose is you know, on Sagittarius is in the fourth house, Cancer. I mean, no, no, no. The Cancer house is fourth house. The home, the family, the mother. Your fourth house is in Scorpio, so that's all entangled up in your purpose to be, have a home, have a family, be a mother, probably. Chaos traveling, higher long, and learn knowledge and stuff, whatever. Okay, so since you're Leo rising, your first house, how you acquaint yourself with people, people th think that you're Leo like right away or something. Your seventh house is your shadow self. It's an Aquarius. That's the people that you keep on attracting. And Saturn, your Saturn's in Pisces. Okay? This is life lessons, discipline, and restrictions, and responsibilities. This is trying to structure you into being this Pisces. Jesus complex, or whatever. And um, seventh house of relationships. Seventh house is ruled by Libra. And of an Aquarius, your shadow self. So you're secretly like your dad, because Saturn is like your dad and authority figures. So your dad probably showed you unconditional love and was overly spiritual and probably treated you like you're beautiful and probably was fake and um, probably was also your friend or someone who was the judgmental person who told you not to be unique and don't do this, don't do that. And also, your, you can have psychic ability to give it to you or you can take it away from you if you're doing it wrong. And it also, give, and it also means your dad was showing you unconditional love, but he rather not take responsibility for you. He'd rather do drugs and then take responsibility for you. Or you were in foster care and you were taken care of by other people. Your dad made other people that attracted to you and take care of you. And, it, and you're secretly like your dad. And also, um, you attract everybody like that is who is like your dad. And um, you're maybe looking for that in your relationships. But your Venus is an Aries, so it means you have flash in the pan relationships coming out of your life, burn, burn in and out of your life. And it's also your Venus is in the eighth house of other people's money. And death, sex, and transformation, which is Scorpio in the eighth house, the cult knowledge. And your eighth house is in Pisces, which means you might die of suicide or you might have drowned. And people, when I say that their eighth house is in Pisces, it's also a psychic house. Eighth house is occult knowledge and secret mysteries and stuff like that. And uh, um, the detective house and your death house, it means in Pisces, means poison, suicide in the eighth house. And uh, so don't do that. Or being drowned in, or drowning. And most people say that when I say there are 8,000 Pisces and all that stuff about drowning, be careful drowning. Uh, they they think they pass, they died in a past life of drowning. And you said that to me too. And that's pretty funny because a lot of people, when I say this, with their chart, they say that about the past life. Weird. Maybe it's just your prediction of your life now. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Your 12th house is in Leo, and your 12th house also. But anyways, yeah, the Saturn will wants to structure you into being psychic and spiritual and stuff, but it can take it away from you. Opportunities to give it to you and be like, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be a douchebag about it with your gifts and your talent? Or are you going to abuse them? Are you going to give you this drugs and take it away. Just do not do those things. It could give you a horrible experience with this lefts and because Pisces and Neptune rules drugs. Your Neptune's in Capricorn. Your Neptune's in the fifth house, the partying and uh, your heart. And it's in Sagittarius expansion and knowledge is where you probably wanted to do that stuff. And that's not where you should do just... Don't do stuff like anything unhealthy. It's ridiculous. But still, your 10th house is in Taurus. It means beauty. But Mercury is in there. It could dehydrate you and all that stuff. <clears throat> like, I'm doing my crest cancer rising. Whatever. But I don't do that. Okay. <clears throat> and then, like, your your Lilith is in Pisces as well. People, you, it means you, you are compassionate to other people. And people don't want to see you stick... 
up for the underdog, which is your Mars is in Leo. That's how you get mad and your sexual expression. And it's in the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces in the 12th house in Leo. So you <clears throat> put all your willpower into spirituality and your soul and stuff. And also you want attention on yourself and, um, you probably stick up for your own enemies when you get mad. <clears throat> you do petty things, and when you get things back, you cause drama. You cause a lot of drama with other people, and there's a lot of, like, Mars and Leo. And it also <clears throat> kind of means multiple orgasms because Leo rules the reproduction system. Mostly people with Lilith and Aquarius have multiple orgasms, but most Leos do too because it, they regenerate. And they want to do it again and again and again. Orgasm. It's the sperm symbol. Whatever. And it's the relationship with children. So you protect your children. Even if they're murderers or something. You you are the lion. You know what I mean. And. You might give them that 12th house experience. Which is foster care. Taking care of others like your dad did to you. Whoever knows what your dad did. I don't know. Um. But I don't know. And your Lilith is in Pisces, though. This is, like, how you rebel and that people don't want to see you do. And it's in the 8th house of Pisces. See? You rebel to do drugs or to be Pisces-like, but it tell, people tell you, no, don't do it. Don't do drugs. Don't freaking be this delusional person. Do not believe in these fake fantasy stuff because Pisces also rules delusions and illusions. So it's in the 8th house of other people's money. You're probably using other people's money to pay for shit that's fake or something stupid. They don't want to see you do this bullshit. But literally, also, you could find out the secrets, too. They don't. Also, they also don't want to see you jealous because 8th house is jealousy. And your Venus is in the 8th house of relationships. You're looking for people who utter people. You use them for other people's money, you know. And um, it also means that you, when you're cheating on them... You accuse them of cheating on you, and that's not cool. And it's also means passion, and sex, and relationship. Like so, who knows? Whatever. But like when Venus is in Aries, it's like I want it, I got it, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna be upfront about it. <laughs> and like, that's crazy. So there's a lot of lessons you have to learn with this Pisces thing, and there's a lot of rebelling to be this Pisces. Thing and could lead to death. So please don't um, go through the unhealthiest way of Pisces stuff or delusional. Don't act like you're going to do drugs and say I'm going to fly and kill yourself. That's what this Lilith and Eighth House Pisces Pisces freaking 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 means most likely. And Venus, do not be delusional over your relationships. Don't be so jealous over the bullshit. Don't use them for their money. Who knows? Whatever. But it could lead to sugar daddies. Kind of like that. Because that's what it's kind of like. And whatever. Oh my god. Your Jupiter is in Libra too. Which is, you're lucky with somebody. You'd be like, if you point at somebody, I want to marry them. You will. You know, you're lucky with being relationships. You're also lucky with your possessions and food. Because it's in the second house. Virgo. So you're analytical. You're a good accountant with your money. <laughs> and... Your left eye is Virgo looking, and then your right eye is Leo looking. So you, when you're mad, you look at them with your right eye because your Mars is in there. And then when you're looking at them critically, you look at them with your left eye. And your left eye is mostly the face, side of the face you would rather have photos shoot of. It's both, mostly people's best side because the second house is beauty, Taurus. And the right side is the emotional side that you uh, kind of hide from other people. But yours is like proud of whatever, how you get your anger you're showing on this side of their face. Who knows? And your Uranus is in Capricorn. Wow. That's cameras. Is, uh, the fifth house. Unusual friends. and you the Unusual parties. <clears throat> um... Unusual hard stuff. Okay, um, 
So that's the story of that's the glory of love. And also the way you heal yourself your crown is in Leo. So it's like you're always constantly trying to heal your persona and how you get mad at others, your anger, freaking problem and your spirituality because it's in Leo. So that wherever you have Leo in there, your ego, it's like you have a perfect ego and then it like crumbles, which it is going to crumble because your Saturn is in... Um, <clears throat> the seventh house next to Aquarius, which is the ruler of the ego, and Aquarius and Leo is the ruler of the ego, it could crumble your ego, you know what I mean? And give you friends and take friends away from you. And, you know, you're seeing other people that are Aquarius, like all friendly and um, know, knows all and an ego just so many, you see them all as different from you and the weirdos. You're like, they're so different from me, but secretly you are like that. You are, are an outcast and you keep on. Um, well, you might feel like one, and you keep on attracting these outcast people like me, some retard like me, or whatever. And maybe your little brother is like, you see a difference from you, but you might not like them. But they're sick, really like you. And I guess, whatever. And also, you keep on attracting people like your dad, because that uh, is there. And you attract all these people who want to be your friend. And you're like, ew, they're different from me. Your CRS is an Aries, so just being yourself and being a leader heals everybody. They all come to you to be that, to be a leader, to uh, start things first, to to survive, or how to survive. Like I don't know what to do. How, how do I live? What are you gonna What are you gonna do? How do you do this for me? Help me be myself. You just do that helps everyone. Like, surviving, and if they need someone to stick up for them, and they come to you, because you got that Leo power of Mars War stuff. They would come to you to protect them. They want you to protect them. And how you do. So, and you give all that comp uh, um, Pisces, 12th house, spiritual energy, um, got chameleonism, and Psyche ability to protect them, you know what I mean? And the light. Your Juno is in Leo, so you get all this unearned attention. <laughs> I don't know. Your Vis is in Pisces. See, so you have psyche abilities too. It can give you these psyche abilities, and it, it's not going to be spoon fed to you, but with Saturn, it gives you opportunities to be like this fake tarot card person that you might be doing and wanting to. And then it could just take it away from you because um, it's fake. But it could just, it's not even, I don't even care about that. It's like, whatever. Um, Saturn's in the seventh house of balance and all that good stuff. So, yeah, who knows? But your tenth house is a Taurus, you're doing something beautiful in your career or something like that. And that's funny because let's do your boyfriend's um, chart and then I'm going to do Sebastian, um, if y'all care about me, I'm doing this for you, I'm gonna do it real quick, I might even be wrong, I don't care, I don't know, I mean, I do care, I mean, if I'm right or wrong, um, I'd rather be learning through doing these for y'all, my Wi-Fi is very slow, okay, I'm gonna calculate your boyfriend's chart, and then I'll do Sebastian, and see where... He's at, you know, your boyfriend's chart, um, which is not Sebastian, but Sebastian will be the third person I'm doing chart. Okay, okay. Let's see. Okay. And I will give you a link in my description below so you can calculate your own charts. And then you'll see what those people say about it and look up what other people say about it. Okay. We don't have the time birth for your boyfriend, so we put time unknown. That's what you check mark at. Because one minute could actually change your chart, so you don't want to do the estimate. Unless you want to do the estimate and see what could, could not be. Okay, well, actually, your boyfriend or your love interest is a Taurus. He's moon and Libra, which means he makes you feel beautiful, like his intoxicating, beautiful emotions. And it means he's 
super embarrassed. His mother was fake and treats him like an inanimate object. And it means that he's super embarrassed and like a hypocrite. And he'd be like, oh my God, you're not going to wear that around me, are you? Even if he's like a punk rock person. And then if you like slightly or off putting, they'll be like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed of every freaking thing and hypocritical about everything. And then his Mercury is in Taurus. So you might have a powerful voice and be good at math or some bullshit. And his Venus is in Aries just like yours. So in his life, he's kind of selfish, loves himself, and he doesn't know how to meet the needs of others. But in this moon sign, Libra, he, that's how he feels about others. So he'll make you feel you know, his Mars is also in Leo, just like yours, so he gets mad the same way. If his pride and ego is hurt, he'll get mad about it. And um, his Jupiter is also in Libra, just like yours. Y'all point at a relationship, and you got it. His Saturn is in Aquarius, which means his ego was crumbled by his father. And he might be a hypocrite because of his mother. And he's probably really feminine. And his Lilith is in Pisces, too, so you don't want to be around somebody who has drugs or whatever, but in delusional, is to collide with yours. But who knows? Y'all have fun, experience each other. And his Saturn's an Aquarius, so a given friends take him away from social media, something like that. He would be really good at astrology if he just put effort into it and learning about that, and he could be taken away from him. And his stuff like that. And his whole life purpose is traveling to such areas, kind of gambling with life bullshit. And that's crazy. So your Mars is Leo and, you know, and his crown's also in Leo. His ego and y'all's ego heal each other. Heal. And also his sea rest is in Aries. Wow, it's generational, I guess, at this point. Mars, sea rest in Aries. He, he heals other, but everybody but being himself, being leader too. Hmm. His palace is in Pisces. Creative um, projects he does. Spiritually wants to dress up in costumes and stuff. Y'all should do that. Do you know in cancer? He wants a family. He wants to be mothering and nourishing in a marriage. He really wants the home like which is kind of like your purpose That's what you want and the what you like is a home a family. He really wants that too His vistas in Pisces. Well, that's a good match It seems like a good ingredients for both y'all Interesting, and that's what I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna say that. Okay, anything else? Hmm. Cool. So, there you go. Okay, next we're going to do um, let's calculate his chart or her chart. I have no clue. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, um, what are you barking at? Where's my doggies? Can you go outside? Okay. That's a good I'm sorry. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Story of that story of love. I'm going to calculate a chart. My Wi Fi is so slow. Um. He actually has his time, so that's really cool. Um, the fourth month is, okay, March, April, it's April, he's probably in Aries, okay. I usually don't say anybody's names, but y'all are YouTubers, so I'm giving y'all a shout out. Um. And if y'all want me to tell others to subscribe to you, then go right ahead. Subscribe to these people. Their link will be in the description below. If y'all want me to remove it, go ahead and tell me. If you don't, then whatever. Because, um, whatever. I will. If you want to. Or leave it there. Or if you want to. Whatever. These are the people I'm doing the charts for. Um, that's the story. Wait, wait, wait. Uh oh. I forgot to put your your time of birth in this. Oops. I calculated it before I put the time of birth in it. But this is yours. Okay. 
24 minutes of your time. I'll put the time so you can just click on it when your thing starts so you don't have to listen to all this nonsense. Come on with it, come on with it, come on with it. You were born at midnight. Like I said, it's not the exact time. You could just drastically change your direct, but it's okay. Um, we're gonna calculate it anyways. Wi-Fi is slow. Wi-Fi is slow. Um, maybe I'll just cut part of this off. Because I'm just gonna upload this. <clears throat> it's for free. Just to listen to my bullshit. My interpretation, my analysis on roasting a chart. Okay, you're an Aries, you're Sagittarius rising, so your moon is an Aries, so you're probably very tomboyish as a guy. Anyways, um, Call it whatever. You're 4,000 Aries, so you have lots of fights at home, I guess, and aggressive, aggressive in sports and stuff like that. The tent house is in Libra. The public's eye, you are beautiful. And um, also, you are a serial monogamous, a marriage monogamous person, like a relational person. You put all your relationships out in the public's eye kind of thing. Also, your Venus is in Gemini, which means you're a player. You have multiple relationships with people, and you treat them all like you are the one. And it's also in the sixth house of day-to-day -day routines. Your sixth house is in Gemini. The community Gemini rules, and neighbors and siblings. So you have a multiple people to deal with every day-to-day -day routine. You always constantly communicate with them, relationships with them every day. Um, and your Mars is in Aquarius. So it's in the second house. So when you get mad, you 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 give them the medicine that they gave you, they treat you with. You want everything to be fair. It also means that your second house is ruled by Taurus, but your second house is in Aquarius. It means that um, you don't like to get mad because you don't eliminate the pleasures in life. Like, you want to, to be, just be nice to the person that's being mean to you until they nitpick you, nitpick you, nitpick you. And then you get scored and you get really mad and they wish they was not messing with you. And especially in Aquarius, which means, oh, I'm a weirdo protester and I just want to be nice to you. I want to be your friend. I want everyone just to be friends. You do everything you can possible to make it friendship works. And... Your your possessions. Also, you're probably fighting with your possessions, like your things, with your friends. Like, go put them all in a safe place or get a lock on your door. Make some boundaries happen so you can, you know, not have to pay for your friends' bullshit. Or your friends have to... Or you get money off your friends. Who knows? It's probably... Something like that. Your Jupiter's in Taurus, so if you aim at possessions and food, you can get it. Mm, and probably get food from your friends. Who knows? Um, I go out to eat with your friends a lot. Oh, who knows? I don't know. Because Taurus is enjoyment of all your food pleasures. Um, also, your Jupiter is in the fo fourth house of the home. Yeah. So, and of... You know, comfort. Um, you aim at people, and you be like, make everyone your family. You put at anybody, point at anybody. You can make them your family, your possession. You know, you want you you be like, you want to be my family? Live with me. Let's expand this house to be my home. Make anyone, everyone, part of your home. Saturn is in Capricorn. In your first house, your Uranus is in your first house. Your Neptune's in your first house, your Pluto is in your midheaven. Your secrets are in the 10th house. And Pluto and Scorpio. 
So your public's eye will see your secrets or your investigations and your chaotic in the 10th house. You're just overly chaotic for people to deal with. And isolating and scary and probably vindictive as remembered and beautiful all at the same time. And balanced. <clears throat> and revengeful. Your 8th house is in Leo, which is your death house. Um, it means you might have heart problems. You might die of a heart attack. Your Lilith is in Leo, too. It means everyone walks on eggshells around you, whether you know it or not. Everyone is um, revolving around you and other people's money. It's also revolving around you. And you are the heart of everyone's revolving around. And people don't want to see you be a narcissist, but you are anyways. And it's kind of chameleon camouflaged and people just don't know it that they're telling you all their secrets they're telling you there's sexual deviant stuff and you're also being sexual lying with secretly with everyone that people don't want to see you be jealous and you are anyways and people don't want to see you get all this narcissist attention but you get it anyways and you are going to be famous if you die. You'll be very, very famous. People will know you after death kind of thing. Like, whatever. Who knows? Or through the death and transformation of yourself and the secrets. And it's like you start all over with new lives, new places all the time. It seems like it's what you're doing. You come off as the friend. You come off as the spiritual person. You come off as very, very serious. But you also come off as happy-go-lucky. You're probably always driving all the time, going to different adventures, different places, and traveling. And having all these new experiences, but coming back to yourself. And that's what's happening to you. And you're... Third houses in Pisces, you can understand the language of heaven and speak really kindly. And Mercury's in Aries, which is you speak aggressively and just get the heart of the matter and, and say things without thinking. And also, it's in the um, fourth house of mothering and nourishment and cancer like stuff. So, you put words to emotions. And your sun sign is in there, too. Your ego is at home with your family. Your luck is there, too. Planet of learning, knowledge. Your north and all is in... Your life purpose is in Pisces. And it's also in the third house, Pisces. Your whole purpose is to write stories, publish things, being around your neighbors, your community, your families, your siblings. And you probably are spiritual with your hands or something. Psychedelic stories, writing, creative stuff. Automatic writing, who knows, all in the third house of your hands and how you wake up. You wake up all spiritual. When you go to bed, you're very, very analytical because your ninth house is in Virgo. You're very skeptic of, like, religious bullshit and stuff and preaching. You are very critical of God and the view of God as the ninth house. And day-to-day uh, -day routines is your th constantly thinking of your your philosophy, which is Virgo is the day-to-day -day routines. Your sixth house of Gemini is constantly talking about this uh, fifth, sixth, seventh house. And also you see people differently of you that talk too much and is gossip people, but you attract them anyways. You attract all these people day-to-day -day routines that you have to deal with in your relationships that you're looking for anyways. And you see them all different from you. But you're secretly like them the same. Mm, all these two-faced people and multiple personalities that you come up with every day in your relationships, that you play a new hat, a new Facebook, a new personality for each group of your relationships differently, secretly isolated different groups of them <clears throat> and secrets that people see or they don't see. You balance it out. In your 11th house of Scorpio, your 12th house is in Sagittarius, and that's crazy, but 
yeah, being a uh, public speaker, spiritual guru, whatever it could be part of your purpose that you lack and psychic ability, you come here to get that. And you already learned about being philosophical and analytical and day to day routine person and nit spit shiny clean, which is your philosophy you believe in. Um, that as your ninth house, you go to bed cleaning, cleaning OCDC before you go to bed. Being a perfectionist before you go to bed, but you wake up all like psychedelic and Pisces spiritualness, and working on working on your purpose, maybe, and always constant communicating with your, with your neighbors, your everyone who's around, the community of people that you take care of because you want to be this compassionate person rather people forgiving is what you lack, is what you came here to learn and gain compassion for other people. And you're Mars. Wow. Okay. Well, that's what that is. You're, you're as Pisces. And... Really? Okay, cool. And you probably have, um, like, spirits that are around you as well. I don't know. Because of all this interesting stuff going on in your life. Um, stuff like that. I don't know. Oh yeah, the way you heal yourself is also crying and Gemini. You have communication problems too. Maybe it's speech problems, experiment, spare something. Maybe stuff like you crush into subjects like me, you, like me, how I talk. Like, I have also crying on Gemini, but it's in the job house. I don't know what house yours is in. Your sea rest is in Pisces. The way people come to you Maybe they come to you for drugs. Maybe they come for, to you for your spiritual bullshit. Maybe they come to you for your illusions that you give them. They come to you for your kindness and compassion and your psychic ability. If you do put effort into being your psychic self, it's your purpose for everyone to come to you. And your forgiveness, your mercy. That you are philosophizing and then you, how you communicate. They come to you to hear you speak. Your palace is in Aquarius. You do creative products with your friends and social media. Your Juno is in Taurus. You have a giving gift of money. Your Vista is in Leo. You get all this unearned attention. And you're the heart of the matter. But yes! Psychic ability for you. Work on it. You just... You know... Um... And you are lively mind or whatever. And you have, you are a gossip person. You tell, you know, you have the gift of gab or whatever. Which is like, you probably put pub smear campaigns against people if they don't do your bidding of bullshit and surround you with your ego and do everything for you. So you make lots of friends and... You could be given, your dad was very disciplined on you, you could give him this good career and it'd be taken away from you. And also you have a, um, a problem with, um, uh, asserting yourself right away, or your, uh, your persona, your face, you feel a lot of stress because it's in your first house and of surviving, giving you the gift of surviving and being a leader, and it could be taken away from you. And... Discipline, you probably had to pay for your own car and stuff. Who knows? Your dad probably put too much responsibility on you or something like that. And was aggressive with you. Like, they just put you all in sports. I guess you and your mom. I don't know. I don't know. And they were selfish. Maybe. Your mom. I don't know. Or helped you think about yourself. I don't know. Stuff like that. Really weird. To... I don't know. That's crazy. But she was also mothering in her shoes. She gave me the home, the comfort, and spoiled you with them. goodness or something. I don't know. And you're lucky with food and money and stuff. Jeez Louise, that's it. That's what I'm going to say about that. Doesn't mean I'm wrong or right. I don't know. Good luck with all that. Just for fun. For free. Stuff. Okay. 
and ninth house of philosophy, you think perfect God kind of complex thing going on. Like, um, like the digestive mind of perfection, a pure minded person that you want to accomplish being, but when, before you go to bed, because your ninth house is when you go to sleep, dream. And 10th house, 11th house is your dreams, hopes, and wishes, and friendships, and how you want to be in the future. And with social media stuff, is your 11th house, which is will by Aquarius. La da da. And the years of Scorpio, the underworld, inside the upper world, higher self kind of place. That's crazy. Your Mars is in Aquarius. And your second house. Got to that. Okay, Toodles, we're ready to sing says Mars and uh, Aquarius, and she's a Scorpio. <laughs> like, that's funny. And you probably like to have sex with their friends, because Aquarius are friends, and Mars rules sex, Mars rules rules, wars, and stuff like that. And Venus and Gemini means community of relationships, love, la da So, and your eighth house is a heart, death, oh my god at all. Okay. Stuff like that. For these two.